much I want to come in at. I think you jinxed it when you said, uh, even even though it's a division game, not everything can happen. I, like that was my one thing looking at this uh, going into the going into the slate of games was like I I probably have on about division games too much, but for this one I was like, yeah, things are riding high for Indianapolis, and they're really not for Houston. I was like, oh, that's the recipe that I normally look for for an upset. I also have to pull you up on the wide receivers because this actually rewinds to maybe t- two weeks ago now since Will Fuller because, mm-hmm. yeah, you'd made a point like that, uh, throw away um, who are the wide receivers. And I did. I listened back to the episode and I was like, why didn't I mention Kiki Kute? <laughs> I, I just pulled up his stats on Pro Football Reference. He actually has none, it seems. He's been in the league since 2018 and he averages what? Or in total now, through 2018, 2019, up as far as this year, 2020, he actually only has 744 yards. So that's 250 a year. So maybe I had no right to know who he was, but I certainly did know who the number three behind the, the DeAndre Hopkins and Will Fuller has been for the last few years. So um, they're not complete nobodies. They're just um, they're just somebodies to people. I don't know how I, I don't know why now I knew Kiki Kiki's name this whole time. Maybe he must have burned me in one week. Maybe put up all those yards in one week on fantasy one time and it hurt me or something. But yeah, there you go. That's my two cents on him. <laughs> they're they're not nobodies. They're somebody to somebody. I love that. I remember Kiki QT from college. That's the only reason I remembered his name. But yeah, I you just can't trust these pass catchers, even though Darren Fells is there and he should be catching more balls. But yeah, I'm, I'm taking the Colts. So is David and so is Mark. So yeah, there you go. Clean sweep right there on the Texans. Get out of here with your no-name wide receivers. It almost makes too much sense to uh, to go to the Chicago Bears after you teed it up so oh. much. But no, I don't want to go to that game because oh. I don't want to lose or I don't want to leave Kansas City and New Orleans to be the last game. Okay, okay. Just because it seems that we always end with Tampa Bay, Kansas City, or the Ravens. So before I get on to why this game should be Sunday Night Football. Oh, Mark versus um, Sunday Night Football. Here we go, people. But for real, though, I mean, we've talked a plenty about how Kansas City has won games this year. If it's the fireworks against Baltimore in week one, if it's Clyde Edwards, Lair pending the ball 46 times against Buffalo, if it's the defense winning over Denver when Denver tried to keep Patrick Mahomes off the field, or if it's last week when they probably had their worst possible outing, they had no rush game. Mahomes had three interceptions and they still put up 33 points. Moving forward with Kansas City now, the narrative is, oh, it's all one-score games. But what do they say about teams in one-score games? The good teams win them. And certainly that's what Kansas City is doing. They're coming off a fifth consecutive win by one one score, which is outrageous. That's six on the year, and they've won them all, which is really impressive. And for context, Pittsburgh, Buffalo, Cleveland, who have each lost one game each, are the next kind of bracket of teams that are super good in one score games. So that almost hammers home that the good teams win close games. Cleveland, interesting, and this is worth pointing out, it was on the same streak as Kansas City up until this week, i.e. they were going for a fifth in a row. They would have actually had, they had one more extra close game then. They would have won seven to seven for the season. So it just goes to show, I put a bit of stock in this, that um, it's kind of a trait that you can, decide good teams off and let's apply that logic to a few teams all right tennessee hayden good or bad team i think they're good i think they're running in the shape i like them they're good so they're a team that started the season with four close wins in their first five games and they have the fifth highest win rate in these kind of games jacksonville good or bad well they're bad exactly they can't get it done they're one of six in close games including uh, an own four stretch in the space of five weeks Mm-hmm. Then you kind of move on to someone. Let's go a bit closer. The New York Giants there for a few weeks, were they good or bad? Oh, I, I would say they were good. I was really liking them. I like them. They had, yeah. a, they had a lot of hype around. They won three of these games in four weeks. Mm-hmm. But then let's move to a super interesting one: the Chicago Bears, who I'll tell oh. you were really good in these games to begin the season. They had five close games in their first six, but then recently they've had zero wins in the last four four so to come full circle on why i'm trying to make this point okay the chargers let's go with a team like them Mm -hmm. they've had nine close games this year and they've only won three of them and they lost one of them to the kansas city chiefs Mm -hmm. and it's this whole concept of what happened that day was kansas city knew how to win their their offensive coordinator wasn't going to call 
to punt the ball instead of going for it on the fourth down. The kicker knows how to pu- score <laughs> at the end of a game. Kansas City just knows how to win right now. Mm-hmm. If you bring it back to last year, and this is why I got started about this stat, uh, Seattle had nine wins in 11 close games. And they were one of these, you know, like it shows your clutchness that the likes of a Russell Wilson has, Aaron Rodgers has it, Matt Stafford has it for a while. The knowing how to win is huge that, you know, when it comes to a fourth quarter and you're in a close game, Patrick Mahomes, all, all of them just know how to win at this point. So it, this is me trying to explain why I have a good feel mm-hmm. for the likes of Kansas City going into a game against New Orleans, who we've been praising all year. I know they had a bit of an off game against Philadelphia. We won't panic about it too much, even though it's probably going to cost them home field yeah. through the playoffs. But like, it's this good feel that we're getting for Kansas City now that they just know how to end a game. And I, I just think going into Sunday Night Football, they have that. Like, yeah, people are saying, are they bored going into games? Yeah. They yeah. just they just have so much going from They know how to win. Whatever it is, they're all clutch. Mm-hmm. We can go through the offense. We can go through the defense again. We're going to do it in weeks forward. So that's why I kind of wanted to look at a different... I just want to explain that they know how to win. And I'm going for Kansas City to win this one. It's an important one, of course, as well, playing against them, a top seed in the NFC. It is important. And and like Mark mentioned, he he said like people have talked about it this week. Are, is Kansas City bored? I mean, look, they they spotted Miami 10 points before they actually tried in that game, and then they blew the doors off of them. I've said it before on the show. I think that Pat Mahomes and the Chiefs, they're a lot like if you watch the NBA, they're the Golden State Warriors from a couple years ago. But yeah, they're the best team in the league, but the kind of bad part is they know they're better than everybody. So they don't always give it 110% every single time. And there will be times when they look a bit sluggish. That doesn't mean they're bad or it doesn't mean they've fallen off. It just ain't as interested. It, it happens to championship teams all the time, people, I swear. But the moment they get into the playoffs, they're going to flip that switch and they're going to start murdering folks. And, and this close game situation, it, it'll, it won't be that big of an issue. I promise you. But, uh, the big storyline is Drew Brees this week. Is he going to practice? Uh, as we've been talking, uh, they they announced that Drew Brees will is going to come off IR, and they're just seeing if he can throw in practice to see if he has any pain or issues like that. The last time he did it last week, he had some issues, and he wasn't able to really go through with it. So we'll feel like we'll more know, know more throughout the week if he's going to be 100% and be able to go in this game for the Saints offense because that's kind of a big issue. They really need this win. They can't afford to fall two games behind the Packers at this point in the race for the first seed. But I, I'm with Mark. I'm taking the Chiefs as well. Listen, they're the best team, people. They're, they're, I'm, we're running out of ways to equate that they're the best team at this point. They're, they're just the best, people. Get used to it. Yeah, some of us are having to go back through close wins just to try and equate some kind of a <laughs> tangible to what they are, some kind of a measurable. But um, no, yeah. for real, like like you said there about them winning, I, I just think that they they genuinely have a, fli- a switch to flip on the playoffs. Like I I really believe, like Andy Reid knows what he do- he's doing. I I just like when Doug Peterson brought out the um, Philly Philly, yes. the Philly special. I think that like Andy Reid's ready to go come playoffs. He, like he was probably expecting teams to know a bit more about them and how they wanted to operate. And he probably just tweaked things a bit. Again, he's just doing things that just about get by teams and they don't even have to go super hard. Like I said, like it was a miserable game. Like everyone's slagging the sack patch moments. If Mitchell Trubisky took a 30 yard sack, everyone would be calling for him to get benched. Yeah, absolutely. But everyone, Everyone has faith in um, Patrick Mahomes and all of them. So, um, yeah, look, I really look forward to seeing them in the playoffs and seeing what they're going to give us because if they're able to give us three, 33 points on a miserable performance, um, yeah, it's just something to look forward to. As we move away from this game, all of us have gone for Kansas City, and that's kind of a surprise because, I mean, New Orleans aren't bad themselves, but it just speaks to the dominance of yeah. uh, Kansas City right now. And, again, super exciting game. It's in the late window of mm-hmm. game so um you don't even have to stay up late to watch oh, it that should be the game everybody watches in that late window the ratings for that are going to be through the roof and mark i i know mark wants that on sunday night football i just know he does <laughs> <All right. laughs> i only want it on sunday night football because it'd be clashing with the cardinals 